So here we're going to look at getting the line of intersection between two planes or two lamina when you're given one common point. Now, in the question that we're looking at here now, as you can see, we have these two planes. I have the vertical and horizontal plane drawn in for reference. This point up at the t top here is a common point. So when I look at my page, what I have here is I have my two planes drawn and I have point A as a common point. So what that's telling me straight away is that point A has to be a point on my line of intersection because it's a point of intersection between the two planes. I need to get a second point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at point D. Now the only reason I'm looking at point D is in my elevation, point D cuts both planes if I draw a horizontal plane. Now, this horizontal plane that I'm referring to, if I come here to my view, and I'm just going to come over here and just pull this down. It says here horizontal cutting plane. Now, as you can see in the 3D view, I've just drawn in a horizontal cutting plane. However, if I go to two window view here now, and I, sorry, one window view, and I just go to my, sorry, my elevation, you can see that that horizontal cutting plane becomes a horizontal line in my elevation when I look straight into it. You can also see that it cuts both of my planes. So my horizontal cutting plane in the elevation becomes a horizontal line. Now that's very important. So if I come down here now, I would advise you to do this in color just because it can get very confusing with other points. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line. Now this horizontal line, as I've said, represents a horizontal cutting plane. I'm going to focus on the plane A, D, E first. Now, D is a point on it straight away, and it cuts A, E at this point here. Where it cuts A, E, I'm going to bring that point down to my plan, and that gives me this point here. We know that it cuts D here and A, E here, so they're going to join together. The biggest mistake people make with this question is they get the wrong points in the plan, and that totally throws off my question. So that's my first line. The second thing that's going to happen is it cuts AB here. So I'm going to bring that down where it hits AB. And it cuts AC here. So AC. Now my two planes have been cut as we can see. And the common point where they've been cut is this point here. That point has to be a point on my line of intersection has to be. Now I can very easily find that point to my elevation by just bringing it straight up and where it hits that horizontal cutting plane that has to be my point. Now I'm going to just get some colour and I'm going to draw in my horizontal line like so. I've stopped here because as you can see I've only one plane going on from here. I'm going to do likewise in my plan. There's my two lines intersecting. If you were to extend this line in your elevation and this line in your plan, it would not impact on your question. It would be okay. So horizontal cutting plane. Find the two lines in my plan that it gives us, and that gives us our point. Now, that has my line of intersection. As we know from doing our dihedral angle, once you get the line of intersection, what we need to do next is we need to get the line of intersection as a true length. So we're going to look in this way. My x1, y1 line is going to be parallel to my line of intersection. So that's an x1 y1. As we know, this is coming from a plan, so it has to be an auxiliary elevation. Now, because this is an auxiliary elevation, I'm going to take all my heights from my original elevation.
Now, I have the, pla the plan, sorry, A, D, E. A, D, E. And I also have the plan A, B, C. Lovely. So that's after giving me two views of my two plans. Now, my point here, this point is on a my line of intersection. So I'm now going to bring up this point. And by bringing up this point, I know that my line of intersection will be on this. I have my height for my elevation. So I'm going to take that height, mark it off. And that point has to be a point on my line of intersection. So I'm going to put in my line for intersection here. I'm going to put in color. Now, very important, because this line of intersection was parallel to my X1, Y1 line, I know that this here is a true length. Always write your true lengths on your page so that they're indicated. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look down into my true length. Now, I could go up this way, but as you can see, I don't have any space left on my page. So I'm going to come down the page. And I'm going to come and bring everything down parallel to my true length line. Okay. Now this becomes my X to Y to. This was an auxiliary elevation, so this view down here has to be an auxiliary plan. Has to be. Now, because it's an auxiliary plan, I'm going to take my distances from my X1, Y1 line back to my plan. However, as you can see, these are big distances and they won't fit on my page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a datum line. And my datum line is parallel to my X1, Y1 line. And I'm just going to put my datum line at point E because it's the closest point. So I'm going to take my distances from my datum line backwards. Now E is on my datum line, so point E is just going to be right here. Point A. Now obviously that's now my point of intersection. B. And D. Uh, C. And A. I just got A, but I don't think I labeled it. There's A. So I have A, D, E. Lovely. That's fantastic. And that now is my plain A, D, E as an edge view. A, B, C. And that's my plane A, B, C as an edge view. Now, this is very important. Can you see that they are intersecting at point A, which is correct, because point A is a point of the line of intersection, so my intersection should happen there. My dihedral angle now, just going to draw a little arc. Get my protractor and measure my distance. And I'm just going to extend on that line. So I'm reading it accurately. One hundred and fifteen degrees. So to recap, in order to get to the hedral angle when you're given one point common point, you have to take a horizontal cutting plane. Now the horizontal cutting plane is very important. Hopefully we can realise that oops, sorry. The horizontal cutting plane becomes a horizontal line in my elevation. So we're not drawing a horizontal line. We're drawing a cutting plane, but it's represented by a horizontal line. That's given us two lines in my plan, which gives us one point.